Hey, I'm Joe with the Cover of Marriage, and I want to welcome you to the live Q&A for the Extraordinary Husband. So welcome to the video. Today we're going to be continuing to answer the question uh, that we talked about last time, and that is, should how should I respond if my wife communicates that she is sexually dissatisfied in our marriage? So just like I said last time, this is a very sensitive topic. So this is not for children, people under 18. Uh, it's for married people, for husbands. So those who are not, who should not be listening to this video. Um, so you should cut it off. Seek your parents. Parents, you should think about it before you let anybody else who is underage watch this video. But anyway, we're going to be continuing to answer the question, how should I respond if my wife communicates to me that she's sexually dissatisfied in the marriage? And that's a very serious, um, you know, question to answer today. And that's a ser very serious thing for you to pay attention to if your wife has communicated or will communicate this to you in your marriage. All right, we're going to continue today um, answering that question. But before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, open up with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness for allowing me to be able to have this live Q&A for all of us to take a part of this live Q&A in today's uh, Extraordinary Husband uh, live Q&A. Thank you for what you have done and for what you are going to do. I uh, invite you to be a part of this. I uh, ask you, Lord, that you allow your Holy Spirit to participate, to be a part of this as well, to preside over today's live Q and A. Help us to help me to speak the words that you want me to speak, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, good morning again. Good morning again. Uh, I want to welcome everybody here for the live Q&A. And so last week um, we talked about this and we definitely um, answered a few questions concerning this. Um, we left off with reasons why your wife uh, would say this. Uh, we did answer the question how you should respond to your wife, and we made sure that you understood that it should have, should be that you don't be you're not defensive, and that you take this very serious. Um, watch the video so that you can um, see what the answers were uh, in a more complete fashion on how you should respond to your wife. We also talked about a few reasons why, and we talked about know that it was it's not always your fault that your wife may um, communicate this to you but sometimes uh, it is uh, it has something to do with you um, if you're not listening and paying attention to your wife as she talks to you that decreases her level of satisfaction in the sexual department of the marriage it really does so you need to pay attention to that. You need to start listening and hearing your wife. So therefore, when you two are sexually active, she's more inclined to be sexually satisfied at the same level that you are sexually satisfied. So I want to continue on with some of the reasons why your wife may communicate this to you other than what I just said. So there, there are other reasons why your wife would, would communicate this to you. And the reason why I want to bring this to your attention is so that you can pray for your wife and so that you can help her in this area because you both want to be sexually satisfied in the marriage. You don't want to just be sexually satisfied and, and, and see that your wife is not sexually satisfied because eventually then you're going to wind up being sexually dissatisfied in the marriage when your wife has been sexually dissatisfied in the marriage 
for some time. All right, give me a moment here, folks. Um, where I change something here. All right, so let's talk about some more reasons. Um, and I want to thank you, uh, who all those who are listening to the live right now. I really appreciate you listening to it. And for those who are listening to it after the recording here, I appreciate you listening to it as well. And I hope that you're getting out of this what you would like. And if you have questions concerning this question, put it in the comment. And also, if you have other questions that you want answered um, in future videos, please put it in the comments as well. You can text me 678-218-9955. If you have questions, you can also send me a direct message. Um, there's other ways as well. But get that to me as soon as you can so that I can answer it. I can pray about it and, and get an answer so that God can give me the answer that he would like for you to have. But anyway, getting back to some of the reasons why this would happen. So um, there could be some physical factors all right, why your wife has is telling you that she's sexually dissatisfied. So that's the reason why it's, it's, it's important that you don't get defensive so that you don't think that she's blaming you for it because you, you're not always going to be the blame. She wants to let you know, but sometimes she may not know that it, it could be some reasonings behind that that's physical on her behalf and not just your behalf. So listen to your wife so that y'all can have this discussion in a way that allows her to feel like it's safe for her to talk about this situation. So it could be some physical situations that go on, that's going on with your wife. And so if that is the case, you know, she, she needs to definitely um, go see a doctor um, and and let the doctor know what's going on. It could be some hormonal changes. It could be some medical conditions. It could be some medications that she's taking, especially if you two uh, are using birth controls. Uh, if, if, if you're doing any other thing um, that you may not be aware of the side effects, you may want to check that out as well too. So, and, and she may also need to exercise more, uh, could be losing weight. I'm not trying to say anything negative about anything, about anybody rather, but it could be the fact that your wife may need to lose some weight. Um, uh, maybe she needs to eat better. Cause, so there's, some, there, there, there's a lot of physical factors there that could be uh, impeding your wife ability to be sexually satisfied in the marriage. It also could be some emotional factors um, as well. She could have some stress, some anxiety, um, depression, and also, as we talked about earlier, some unresolved conflicts between you and her, but it may not necessarily be unresolved conflicts between you and her. It could be unresolved conflicts that she has with other people that's affecting her mentally. Because like I said, in the last video, your wife needs to be mentally available to be sexually satisfied in the marriage. See, hers does not come from just seeing and doing the action. She has to have mental stimulation. I'm not a woman, so I don't 100% understand. I just understand what I have learned about this situation. And I know that women need to be mentally stimulated in order to in, in, increase their ability to have an orgasm and be sexually satisfied in the marriage. And, and conflicts and stress and depression and kids and household chores and all these other things compacted on top of each other definitely will decrease your wife's ability to be sexually satisfied in the marriage. So y'all want to talk about all these things and you want to pray about them because 
without praying, you won't get what you really need to know so that you can understand what's going on with your wife. And welcome, Jaquez and Jeremiah. I want to welcome you both to the live. I'm glad to see that you're all listening. If you have any uh, questions or comments about what's being said, please let me know if I can get to them. I definitely will definitely get to them. So anyway, you know, pray about this situation uh, and ask God to help you and your wife to understand what's really going on. And you never know what the situation could be that's causing your wife to be sexually dissatisfied in your marriage. You, you definitely need to talk about it. And another reason why is because, you know, there's a lack of communication. Um, she's feeling unappreciated. She's emotionally disconnected. Uh, you and your wife may have a mitch, mitch, mismatched libido, uh, different in desires, boredom, lack of variety. And think about the life stages that you two are at right now as well. That could be affect the everything that's going on with her being satis satisfied in, in the marriage. Because depending on her age, you know, she's in her 40s and 50s. That's definitely a big factor. So y'all need to definitely pray and, you know, your wife should go to the to the doctor and consult with her doctor on a regular basis. And then also you two can get into counseling and talk about how to resolve some of the conflicts and challenges that y'all have going on that's causing your wife to not want to be uh, connected with you sexually in the marriage and it's important that these things take place because if they don't take place, you two are going to be stuck and not understand what's really going on here. And it's, it's an important factor uh, in your marriage because when there is no sex going on in the marriage is a direct representation of the environment is a direct representation of the status of the relationship. It's a direct representation of how you and your wife are getting along in your marriage as well. So when there's no sex going on in your marriage on either of you, either of you behalf, then you need to check that out and, and, and try to see what's really going on. And again, I told you about in the last video about the two videos that we have on our um, YouTube channel, Nine Tips for the Marriage Bed. Uh, watch those videos if you haven't, because that's going to help you. And then there's also a book, Celebration uh, of Sex. Uh, I told you about that book as well. Um, a celebration of sex. It's a guide to enjoying God's gift of sexual intimacy so you can understand your wife's body and you can understand your body. Because sometimes we as men, we don't even understand our bodies. We may think we understand our bodies, but it's not until you really read and understand what someone is trying to teach you about your body that you begin to understand the different pieces of your bodies that you didn't know that existed. And the same thing with your wife. Some of you may not even understand how your wife reaches an orgasm. In this book, A Celebration of Sex, it helps you to understand how your wife reaches a, an orgasm. It actually helps you to understand how you reach an orgasm as well. And it's basically the sexual tension that continues to build up. Uh, for a man, it builds up more physically than mentally, even though mentally men can be challenged, but it's mostly physically for a man. But for women, the emotional tension is how she's thinking and how she's feeling that's, that's causing her emotional or her sexual tension to build up. And, you know, when tension builds up, builds up, builds up, 
then it releases, and that's where the orgasm comes from. It releases. And if you, you didn't know, a woman can can have an orgasm more than once during a sexual episode, whereas men, we're only going to have an orgasm once during a sexual act episode. But women can have repeated uh, orgasms, and, and that's because of how they're feeling and how their body is made uh, differently than ours that causes them to be able to do that. So if you didn't know that, then you you know it now and you should take advantage of that it's because just because your wife reached one orgasm doesn't mean that she can't do it two or three times in a sexual episode and women if you're listening to this and you didn't know that hey now you do know it and take advantage of that um, because now you can make up for all those times that your husband had an orgasm and then you you know can kind of get there with him so listen, it's important that you both are sexually satisfied in the marriage. And if you have problems with that, you know, you definitely need to, need to go and get some, seek some help with uh, this and talk about these things that we talked about that are the reasons why, you know, that you, uh, that your wife is not sexually dissatisfied. You know, you can start talking about this situation. Your wife can go to the doctor to see what's going on. This is a this is all about what you can start doing to increase sexual dis sexual satisfaction in your marriage. These are some of the things you can do, and 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 really in the video nine nine tips for the marriage bed that definitely gives you some very good ideas of what you can do and what you should be doing so that your wife can be sexually satisfied in the marriage. Prayer is a very, very big part of this, folks. God says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer, supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Take these concerns, that this concern that you have with your wife in the sexual department in your marriage to God, uh, because he's the one that creates you all. He knows more about you than anybody that you know. He knows more about you than you know about yourself. So God will lead you in the direction that you need to go so you, you two can be sexually satisfied in your marriage because it's important that you both are sexually satisfied in your marriage. And so we talked about boredom and many of you probably may be there because you've been married 10, 15, 20 years and you're like, our sex is bored. So think about a television program, okay? Now, this is a television program that you and your wife only watch. It's not for anybody else to watch, but you and, and your wife are the actors in this. And you, as a husband, you get to write the script for this television program called You All's Sexual Interactions. So you write the script. And... and, and and when you get to the point where you are not able to write the script anymore, where y'all are sexually satisfied, then you need to take it to the creator of sex and say, God, I need a new script. And when you're writing this script, you need to make sure you're writing it in a way that it aligns with God's standards, God's policies and procedures, God's commands on sexual integrity. You need to know that. And I, I do have a book that I just wrote not too long ago, back in January. It's called Five Steps to Sexual Temptations, uh, Five Steps to Sexual Integrity, How to Stop Sexual Temptations from Dominating Your Life. That's the name of it. Five Steps 
to sexual integrity, how to stop sexual temptations from dominating your life. And the reason why I bring this book up is because it tells you what sexual integrity looks like in your marriage, what it should look like. And if you want to have a better idea of what sexual integrity looks like and the things you can do and the things you shouldn't do in your marriage as you're writing your script for the sexual department of your marriage, this book is definitely going to help you. You'll find that book on Amazon. I'll also put a link to it in the comments as well. So please get help with this situation. If your wife has said to you that she's sexually dissatisfied in the marriage, or if your wife ever says that she is sexually dissatisfied in the marriage. And again, you know, this question came about because my wife said to me, you know, the other day that she was sexually dissatisfied in the marriage. And we had to have a conversation uh, about this so that we can get it straightened out. And, and don't be afraid to continue to go on sexually in your marriage. Like, this is not something that ends sex in your marriage. This is something that causes you to look at what's happening what you could do differently so that your marriage can get better. And if you want to know some different positions, some other things you can do that's in line with God's policies and procedures for sexual behavior, a celebration of sex uh, is a very good resource for you to take a look at. Also, the nine tips video that I told you about in the nine tips article on our website as well. So if you have any questions or comments about this, let me know. So just want to let you know that uh, our time is up for today. And also want to let you know the extraordinary husband masterclass is available. If you want to learn the things that you can do so that you can put the things that I teach you in these videos into action. If you need to be guided through the process of putting any of these things that I teach you into action, the Extraordinary Husband Masterclass is available. It happens uh, twice a month on the first and third month, first and third Sunday of every month. And we talk about the qualities that each husband should have that will allow you to put the things that I'm teaching you in these videos into action. So if you want to know the qualities that you need to have as an extraordinary husband so that you can be an extraordinary husband, the Extraordinary Husband Masterclass is available. You can see a link for it in this video, or you can you can also look for the um, pinned posts. It'll also have that information in for you. If you want to, if you'd like to uh, support these videos, um, you can go to our website, thecolorofmarriage.com, click on the donation button and donate. You can also zell me at 678-218-9955. You can also cash at me at uh, dollar sign Joe Rob 54. And if you want to find other ways, just let me know. But right now, let's go ahead and pray out, y'all. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, your grace, your kindness, for allowing us this time in today's Extraordinary Husband live Q&A, Father. Let those who have watched this video, who are watching this video, get the information that they need to get so that they can have a sexual part of their marriage that is satisfying to not only them, but their wives as well. I thank you for what you have done and what you are going to do. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, fellas, y'all take care. Have a good rest of the day. Be safe. And until next time, which is Friday at 7 a.m. Take care. Bye-bye.